Sound Spades, and welcome to the destroying of the Electro Voice 664 Part 2. In Part 1, we saw Michael Wynn use this as a hammer, putting the nickname The Hammer to the test, and it passed with flying colors. Now, some of you sharp-eared people will notice that there was a slight buzz that was being created on this microphone by the end, and there's a good reason for that. The Electro Voice 664 that I purchased is a 1960s model, and therefore it came with a very old cable. You can see all the dry rot on this cable, and it goes all the way through the entire cable, if you notice. But it is a heavy-duty cable, so it'd be a shame to replace it with something that's garbage. Notice the connector is not down there anymore, and I'll explain why in a second. But if you notice at the end of the previous video, there was some buzzing that was taking place. And so what I did is I wanted to look at it and see why that was happening. In doing so, I came to realize that the connector on the, you know, the, the side that would go into the recorder happened to have quite a bit of damage done to it. None of the pins are even connected anymore. So I realized that this was going to need some TLC before I could do part two. Being me, I decided I was going to go all out in the replacement of this cable. So I'm using Canary Star Quad with a Neutric EMC connector on the end that would go into the recorder. As for the other end, I had to basically take apart the Anfinol cable that came with it. Now, this is not a standard XLR. If you notice right here, it is a four pin that is a proprietary cable that only works with older microphones like this EV664. But I had to take it apart, figure out the pin out for it by looking on old Shure uh, websites and actually found the pin out and soldered it myself. So this cable should be ready to go. Now you'd swear this Electro Voice 664 is back to factory specs. I mean, this thing sounds great. You can hear that I'm tapping the microphone and I'm actually speaking into it. And it sounds really good, especially for being an over 50 year microphone that's gone through quite a bit of punishment. So what am I going to do to this poor thing in this video? I mean, I really don't want to get take any more damage to it because it'd be nice to have a working microphone at the end of it. But at the same time, I've kind of started the series. So it's like got to go all out at this point. Why don't we figure it out as we maybe cook some lunch? What do sound people like to eat? Well, you could say if you were from California, you might like something more along the line of a vegan diet. Me, I'm more of a carnivore myself. Therefore, I figured I would make something that a carnivore would like. And just to give you an idea, I've been cleaning off this grill, although not very well. And now some of the heat has escaped, but it's still up at about 300 and it is full high heat on both burners. So to give you an idea of why I'm showing you that, I am going to cook up a little Electro Voice 664. There we go. So we're going to let it cook for a little while. I'm simultaneously recording from both of these cameras. The camera that's inside, or rather right over here, and then the camera that you're hearing me on right now. I don't really know how long a microphone is supposed to cook for, but I'm giving it an idea of maybe a minute or two. Uh, there's a bit of smoke that you're seeing occasionally coming up here, and that's because, in all honesty, I have not cleaned this grill out for probably about two years now because I've basically been cooking on a uh, on the stove inside using a, a Himalayan salt block, which I really like the flavor of and stuff like that. Now, I'm obviously no chef, and one of the ways you're going to tell that is because you've probably seen my video where I basically made golem ju juice, and if you haven't seen my golem juice video, check it out right there. It's a lot of fun. Now. Another reason why I'm mentioning it right now is because as a non-chef, I don't know at what point you're supposed to turn down a burner, at what point you're supposed to leave it as high heat, and basically at what point it's done. But considering this is a microphone, a hammer at that, I'm assuming at least that it could probably withstand some amount of damage to it. I know there's plastic and circuit boards on the inside that are probably going to melt and do damage if I leave it on too long, but that's kind of the point, isn't it? I mean, right now the temperatures have gotten close to 450 degrees and I'm not cutting intentionally because I'm going to want to make sure that you can see that this thing is going to get up probably around 500 by the time I pull it out. Now it is hot, it is summer right now or at least it's uh, technically summer temperatures here in the south and so grilling is very popular especially around the 4th of July. So I'm going to probably have to get this thing cleaned up anyway, but what better way to do it than after, you know, sterilizing a microphone? Because remember, I bought it used off of eBay and I don't really know where it's been from. So it could have been in a very unsanitary environment, especially if people have been speaking into it for long periods of time. And I don't know exactly the history of this microphone. Therefore, I'm just being safe by sanitizing it. Some people may be using things like 
wet wipes, wet hand sanitizing wipes, something like that. But really, why? I mean, if you have a grill, you might as well sanitize something, you know, using it old fashioned style, the way that people have been sanitizing things forever, and that's over a fire. And I forgot to turn the heat down, so we're gonna check on it right now. As you can see right here, I have my trusty camera still on high heat and the microphone is cooking away on the inside. And you can see a little bit of smoke in there. Again, sorry, this grill is not uh, in the uh, most cleanly cleanliness of, uh, of possible environments here, but I'm gonna at least zoom in there and show you. And uh, sorry for the crudity of this uh, video, but there you go. I'm a sound guy and wanting to be very candid and upfront about this whole process. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit long because it doesn't quite look done just yet. But in order to make my point here, I feel the need to tell you that this particular grill, I don't know why, but it seems to go up to 800 degrees on the thermometer on the front, but I've never gotten this grill higher than about 500 degrees. And right now, I probably should have shown it on this camera, it's only sitting at around 400 even as we speak. And part of that's because I opened it up and basically it reset the uh, thermometer on the inside. But even before I started this and opened it up, it was still only around 500 degrees. And it is hot out here, which is why I'm sweating. Woo! <laughs> um, but what else should I be thinking about here? Well, you don't really want to cook anything with your microphone, do you? I mean, it's basically just a microphone and, uh, you know, being completely honest, that should be enough, right? I mean, it's, it's pretty decent enough as it is. <sighs> I'm kind of running out, out of things to say here, let the truth be known. But I want to try to see if I can get this thing back up to about 500 degrees, still on high heat. But, uh, I mean, I don't really want to cut, so I'm trying to figure out things to say. Uh, right now, it's about 92 degrees out here in Atlanta, where I am. And, uh, yeah, luckily I'm in the shade of my house. So, uh, I mean, do you think it's done? Let me see what the temperature is like right now. It's only gotten up to about 450 degrees. I feel kind of the need to leave it on a little bit longer. And we'll see if that's enough to completely destroy this microphone. I mean, I kind of hope it still survives because I do like this microphone, especially since I did the repair of the cable and it's now back to fully functioning working order. But you know, you know, you got to do a part two to a video and what else am I going to do? I mean, a hot temperature thing seems like a very logical next step. Oh, see, I'm no, I'm no chef. Okay, so let's look at it now. It is doing a bit of damage. I should probably turn it over, shouldn't I? Oh, I'm not able to turn it over. There we go. How are we doing here? All right. We're gonna let it go on that side a little bit, just to make sure it's fully done. I mean, if your microphone doesn't cook all the way through, then it's probably gonna just go bad or something, right? I mean, there's laws against undercooked meat in restaurants, so you might as well make sure your microphone is fully cooked. But considering that it's been going for, I don't know how long it's been, maybe a few minutes now, I feel the kind of need to leave it on there for maybe another minute or two. And like I said before, I'm going to see if I can get this up to maybe about 500 degrees. It is still high heat. I mean, I'm going full throttle on the propane, but who knows what will actually happen, you know, in time. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using my grill this way, considering that it's probably not really necessarily good for the grill, as I mentioned before, I usually cook on the salt block, but I still need to do a full cleaning of this grill anyway. But also, why is my wife letting me get away with this? Well, she's out of town right now with the kids. So I am basically being left unsupervised here at the moment. So why not go through my list of things that I can only do when my wife is not around, like grilling microphones. And it's as if I had been pre-planning this for a long time. But in all honesty, I just kind of thought of it after coming back from a movie, which I saw John Wick 3. And I highly recommend it if you like the John Wick series. And I'm still vamping on talking about nonsense. Sorry about that. But, you know, hey, what am I going to be doing otherwise except just uh, talking to you guys while cooking a microphone? Um, aside from that, now, you may be wondering why I didn't put the cable in there. Well, last night is when I was talking to some people on Discord, and it suddenly hit me as to I need to do a part two of this series. 
And I could have just omitted this, the part two, or done it later. I mean, I was planning bigger and better things, but it really didn't end up panning out because it just, some of the plans I had didn't work out. Like, for example, one of the things I wanted to do is go to medieval times nearby and see if I could find a knight down there to take some chops at, the, at this. But none of the knights seemed to be that willing to go into the modern era and do something with a microphone. So now it is just me trying to figure out wonderful ways of damaging this microphone and hopefully destroying it on my own. But here it is cooking on my stove. We're getting pretty close to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm hoping to actually reach that before I end this and take it off the, uh, the stove top. But uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, I was very impressed to find that I had enough propane in the tanks to make this thing you know, still go. I was happy to find that it hadn't completely leaked out into the world. But, you know, it was very very well maintained when I started cooking on the uh, Himalayan salt block inside. Now, this microphone here is the hammer, so it's not really designed to withstand extreme temperatures. And as a matter of fact, in the manual, I'm sure it originally said, we don't recommend you using it in high heat or very cold environments. Usually there is a range of temperatures it recommends that you use the, the, the products in. And obviously a grill that is sitting here at close to 500 degrees now, if you notice right there, it's getting glare. It's uh, getting closer and closer and closer to being uh, outside of those temperature ranges. As a matter of fact, if the surface of Venus is 900 degrees, this microphone right now is about almost 500 degrees. It is about halfway between the temperature here in Atlanta and the temperature on Venus. I don't know why I'm really mentioning that except that I'm still looking for things to say while cooking the microphone. Well, for some reason, the thermometer is no longer going up. It's still holding at about 475. So why don't we check on this microphone and we're gonna see how it's done. How it's doing here. Now I'm uh, checking on it. It doesn't physically look like it has un endured any damage, but it's such a heavy microphone, I can't even take it off. There we go. All right. <laughs> uh, the plastic looks okay. It doesn't look like it endured a whole lot of damage. So. Oh, man. Don't let me in the kitchen. I'm sorry, people. I mean, I call that pretty well done. It's nice. I mean, it's not really doing any damage. But, yow, hold up. I mean, I don't really want to touch it. Oh, jeez, this thing's hot. That was the grill I touched. But if I were to touch it myself... Oh, man, it is, it is really scorching. Yeah, I wish I had a, uh, a way to measure the temperature for you, but I don't have a thermal camera. Sorry, guys. You're just going to have to take a word that it's been on there for a while. I mean, you've seen it in a split screen mode. So uh, why don't we go listen to it? Let's let it cool down, I should say, and then let's go listen to it. So in order to show how hot this microphone is at this time, I'm going to be using a piece of ice. And by putting it right on top of here, you'll see how quickly it's going to start melting through. I mean... I've only had it on there a few seconds now, and there's already a concave piece built into this microphone, if you can look at that right there. Now, I'll leave it right on top there and let it kind of melt. You can see all the drips that are going off of it. Basically put, this microphone is extremely hot right now. I mean, I certainly don't want to touch it. You can see all the water pulling up underneath it. I tried putting a thermometer on it, but the meat thermometer just did not want to cooperate. But hopefully, I've kind of made my point here by the fact that it's only been on there for a few seconds, and... The ice is almost completely gone. It's being melted straight up by this microphone. You saw the microphone next to the microphone before we even started here. And now you could just see it completely vanishing before your eyes. No time lapse or anything. This is just me holding it on there and watching it slowly work its way down towards my fingers. I'm hoping it didn't actually... Da the water doesn't damage the microphone. It may be terrible if the microphone got damaged because of the water, but... Oh, geez, it's still very hot. Okay, I'm just going to have to let it sit out here for a while, and we'll hope that it uh, is able to uh, <laughs> recover itself. You can see the microphone has already completely banished the ice. Man, I didn't expect it to go that quickly, to be honest. Now that my EV664 has cooled off, I feel the need to test it. So why don't we do so right now? 
This is the exact same Electro Voice 664 that I used in the cooking test. And not just that, after the fact, I did put a piece of ice on top of it and let it melt down, which it did so in about one minute, surprisingly fast. So that hopefully is enough proof to let you guys know that this is the microphone I used and I didn't record this out of sequence, like when I did the presentation video before I cooked the microphone. But anyway, tell me what you thought in the comment section down below. I'm going to have to do a part three, though, because the microphone has not been killed properly yet. I, you know, I'm liking this microphone more and more, but... It's got to be done. But thank you for tuning in this episode of Sound Speech, and be sure to tune in the future for more episodes of Mass Destruction and Sound Advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below, or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.